let's talk about audio. Now there are so many ways to do this, but here's how I record mine. My first recommendation is to not even try to do this without investing in audio recording equipment. And you don't need to break the bank either on this one, but you need to invest. It doesn't matter how beautiful and how high quality your footage is, horrible, disgusting audio will ruin it. I promise you. There are three main ways that I like to capture audio at the ceremony. Lav mics, hooking up an audio recorder to the audio box, and a shotgun mic. My first preference and my favorite is a lav mic. My favorite lav mics and the ones I encourage every videographer to invest in are the Tascam DR10Ls. These lav mics are nice. They're small, they come in black and white, and you can get them for only about 200 bucks, which to me is a steal for a lav mic. And most importantly, they capture audio beautifully. Matt Johnson, an incredible wedding videographer that I follow, also uses the DR10Ls, and he made a video walking you through every setting you need to know on the Tascam. So I would recommend watching that for more information. The link is in the description below. There are three main places I recommend putting the lav mic on the groom. On his lapel, inside his shirt, or behind the knot of his tie. Most lav mics come with a clip that you can use on the lapel, but if you want to put it inside his shirt or somewhere else, I would recommend using Rycoat stickies. For the audio recorder, you can easily clip it to the groom's belt and bundle all the extra cord together and put it in his coat pocket. When I put the lav mic on the groom's lapel, I try to put it behind where his boutonniere will be, usually halfway up his lapel. I then tuck the wire around his lapel and use a sticky to ensure it stays tucked. Then I clip the recorder to his belt and stuff the extra wires in his pocket. If it's a windy day, I use Bumblebee wind covers to ensure that the wind doesn't ruin the audio. Here's two examples of the lav mic on the groom's lapel with and without the wind cover on a slightly windy day. This audio is raw. Tascam DR10L without wind cover. Tascam DR10L with wind cover. Next, my personal favorite place to put the lav mic is right under the groom's shirt, slightly to the left or right of the tie. People usually think the shirt will block the audio, but it won't. It blocks the wind and captures audio beautifully. I just stick the lav mic to the groom's skin or undershirt using a sticky and feed the wire down his shirt and out to the recorder. Here's an example of the audio captured under the shirt. This is an audio test for Wedding Video Pro with lav mic under the shirt. And lastly, you can place the lav behind the groom's tie knot. It's hidden and the wind can't get to it. I stick it right to the shirt using a sticky and then tighten the tie to hide the microphone. I then weave the wire through his shirt and out to the recorder. Here are some audio captured with this setup. This is an audio test for Wedding Video Pro with the microphone placed under the tie knot. Grooms are easy. Brides, on the other hand, are super intimidating, especially for us male videographers where we need to get inside the dress to put the mic where it needs to be, but we don't want to go there. But don't worry, there is a solution. After hours and hours and hours of research, here is the best way that I found to accomplish this task with the best results. I invested in a white thigh belt, which has a small pocket that you can easily fit the task cam into. Before the bride puts on her dress, I take my white task cam and using stickies, I stick it as high as I can on the inside of her dress without it being visible or obstructive. The lav mic should be hanging down right in the middle of her dress between the cleavage. Trust me, she won't even feel it. Then I'll show her bridesmaids how to attach the thigh belt. I'll instruct her bridesmaids or the bride to wrap the thigh belt around her mid thigh. I could either instruct her to hit record then or wait till the ceremony gets closer and have one of the bridesmaids turn it on for me. And when the ceremony is over and she has some downtime, the beautiful thing about this setup is she can grab the thigh belt and pull the whole thing out from under her, mic included, without a problem and done. Here's an example of this setup. Almost five years ago, you stepped into my life and changed my life forever. However, you need to prep the bride before the wedding day if this is the route you're going to take. Showing up on the wedding day during the hustle and bustle and stress of everything, holding a white thigh belt saying I need to go into your dress, will just come out wrong, weird, and not help the bride feel at ease on her big day when emotions are already running high. Before the wedding, maybe six weeks before, I like to shoot my clients an email or jump on the phone with them to go over the logistics of the day. And then I explain to my brides that audio is a crucial part of their video and high quality audio will elevate the video so much more. I explain that the best way to do this is to put a lav mic 
on the bride to capture her vows. I reassure the bride that the mic will be invisible and she won't even notice she's wearing it. And I also mentioned that the lav mic recorder will need to be attached to a thigh belt that wraps around her leg, very light and it's white and no one will see it. I'll tell her that I'll teach her bridesmaids how to do it and she's usually great with it. And they always love the results. Moving on to audio recorders. If the ceremony has a DJ or an audio box that they're using to pass around a wireless mic, all you need to do is to hook up your audio recorder to their box. I own a Zoom H1, which I love and recommend because it auto adjusts the gain levels to match the person's voice, thus causing the audio levels to sound great and never peak. If you do go with the Zoom H1, make sure to also invest in a quarter inch adapter so you can plug into any audio box if needed. Here are some examples of the Zoom H1 capturing audio from the DJ's audio box using his wireless mic and all I did was turn on the audio recorder and hit record. You are my best friend and I can't wait for what's coming for us. You deserve the world and I will do my best to give us the best world that I can. The only way you're going to get through it is to love each other. That will be the only way. There will be hard times but there will always be and if all else fails, our last option is to get a great shotgun mic for your camera. I use the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus. This mic works best if you're super close to the couple and pointing it directly at them. However, it does pick up a lot of ambient noise. There are only a few settings on this mic, and honestly, I don't use them very often. But if the bride has a quiet voice, then I'll increase the dBs by plus 20, which increases the gain levels. Here's an example of a wedding shot with this microphone for audio. Not the best, but it was better than nothing. Yes continue to persist to this day of pursuing my sister. So I thank you for that. Um. Ideally, you'll have lavs, audio recorders, and a shotgun mic all rolling as backup. One wedding I shot, my lavs and audio recorders completely failed, and I had to rely on the shotgun mic. And if you completely miss the vows, and all the audio equipment doesn't work during the ceremony, or sometimes the bride and the groom stumble through their vows, you can always pull them aside for five minutes during the reception, take them to a quiet place, and have them re-say their vows into your microphone, which allows for a controlled, quiet environment. I met a videographer who does this every single single wedding and the results are amazing. Just explain to the couple why you're doing it and they'll love the results. So that's it for recording audio in a ceremony. Be sure to check out the multiple job shadows in the course that will show you how I apply all of these things in real time. And if you guys have any further questions, please let me know.